name is Cheryl Ling Lee. I'm the co-author of Groundswell and also a Silicon Valley mom blogger. And I'm going to be making mashup pasta today. And the whole idea behind this is you, is you take a lot of different things that you probably have sitting around in your house already. Jars of condiments, your favorite um, little things that you have just lying around, and you throw it all into a pasta dish. And what I love about making this is I can make it with my family, and I have my assistants here. And also that you can make this literally in about 10 or 15 minutes flat. What we're going to be making is, again, a whole bunch of different things. We have some chopped garlic. Um, it's usually about four or five cloves, and if you like more garlic than that, you can put lots more in, less if you don't want to do that. And if you're really in a pinch, you can use a chop, uh, the jarred chopped garlic, which I use all the time. Uh, we also have about one large onion uh, chopped up. I'm using a Stockton red onion from the farmer's market today. We usually use about a can of uh, chopped tomatoes. Again, you usually typically have it in your pantry. But I also can use two large tomatoes, which I also oftentimes get from the farmer's market or even from my own garden. Then we have um, a bunch of jarred things. I love Trader Joe's, so I use some of their bruschetta mixes. Uh, mixed onion, I'm sorry, mixed olive bruschetta, sun-dried tomato bruschetta, uh, some sun-dried tomatoes, and these are wonderful. They're already pre-sliced and julienne cut, so you can literally scoop it into the dish and you'll be done. Some capers. And then, again, my wonderful favorite, diced tomatoes in a can. And this is my secret ingredient. This is a jar of cultured garlic flowers um, in oil. And I got this from my sister-in-law in Montreal. Um, but it's just sort of a, a nice extra punch of garlic. If you don't have this, again, it's a little bit hard to find. You can always just use more garlic. So one of the pains of having garlic is chopping it because it's messy and it makes your hands stink and smell. So my son's going to show us a different way of chopping garlic. So, okay, okay. Um, so you get the garlic cloves and you um, you can so um, how we peel it. Yeah. So usually me and my mom we take like a cup or some kind of glass object or a can or something. We smash it a little bit, and then it kind of cracks the skin off, and then you can kind of really peel it. And we're gonna chop this into little, kind of little pieces, maybe in half. You can cut the first in half. And we have this special little gadget that we got from one of these cooking stores. And there's a little blade that spins when you turn the wheels. And you're supposed to put the little pieces of chopped garlic in on this side here. And you can stuff it in. It's kind of hard at the first, but once you get it, it really starts to chop it up. And it kind of takes a little practice. That looks good. And then when you're done, you make it go to little places. You open it. And then you got some really fine chopped garlic. So now I'm going to cook the pasta. And I like usually using angel hair pasta, which I just buy out of the box. And the reason I like it is that it cooks in literally minutes. So I typically put about um, half a box in for uh, two adults, or so the whole box for the whole family. And what's nice if your kids don't like all the stuff in their pasta, you just separate the pasta out later and you keep you give them a separate sauce maybe like tomato sauce or marinara sauce it takes about two minutes to cook yeah so the pasta has been cooking for about two three minutes um, i don't put, cook it all the way because i'm going to be cooking it again uh, with the sauce so i'm just going to take it off now so take it over here i'll just drain it real quick and easy right into the pot i'll be trying really really well and I just leave it in the colander just like that. Okay, so we're at the pot now. We're gonna start cooking it. I usually put it in about medium high. And I'm using a different pot for today because it's a little bit easier to see this, but if you really want to cut back on the number of dishes that you use, well, you can use the same pot that you just cooked the pasta in. So I have my other assistant here, my daughter. She's gonna be doing a little stirring for us. And I'm gonna first take some olive oil and Drizzle some of it in the bottom. It's usually about two tablespoons or so. And now we're going to take the garlic that we have pre-chopped. Again, this is about four or five cloves. Um, again, it's about two teaspoons of pre-chopped garlic is what it comes out to. And we just put it in there. And my assistant's going to be stirring again. This is freshly chopped onion. 
So that's going to brown for a little bit, about a minute or two. We're going to add all the other things now. So I'm going to take my little flour garlic, garlic flowers. I just put about one heaping teaspoon into there of that, just to add it in. And then I have this mixed olive bruschetta from Trader Joe's, which is just chopped up olives. Um, and we love olives, so we, I take about two large heaping tablespoons and throw that in there. I'm going to add my tomatoes now. I'm going to add uh, my chopped tomatoes here, my sun-dried tomato bruschetta, and then also my sun-dried tomatoes julienne style. Oh, that's looking really good and mixed up now. These are my sun-dried tomatoes. Again, two large heaping spoonfuls of that. It's all chopped up as olives and sun-dried tomatoes in there. And then I have my julienne sun-dried tomatoes. And these are wonderful. Again, about Two large heaping teaspoons, tablespoons. Sorry. <laughs> you got it there. You're doing a great job stirring it. Okay. This is a big jar of papers. Not again, lots paper. and lots of papers, right? So again, two big heaping spoonfuls of paper. Now, what's great about this sauce is that if you like more capers. You can put more in. And I think you have enough capers in there? Yeah. Can you should add more? more? Okay, so we're gonna have three big spoonfuls of capers in there. What else do you think it needs? Does it look pretty good? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks, looks pretty good. Yeah, after all the prepping and everything, we're about five minutes into this. Um, and so you just let this cook for a little bit just so it gets all nice and hot because everything's already pre-cooked. And then you take your pasta that we had sitting in the sink. And we start throwing it in here. And it's a little hot, so I'm going to use this, the tongs. And then this is the fun part. I'm going to just break it up a little bit and throw it right in. And you just start mixing it all in together like this. It gets all sort of caught in between the pasta noodles, all really mixed in together. And that's why we call it a mashup. <laughs> Sort of a Silicon Valley term. Whoa, oh, there it goes. <laughs> the hard part is making sure it doesn't get all over the place. Okay. We'll just throw it right into the serving dish like this. And the nice thing is that the sauce is a little bit on the bottom. Kind of spread it on top. And then you, the crowning piece is the cheese. So we just take some Parmesan cheese, sprinkle it all over the top of it. Lots and lots and lots of cheese. And cheese, the nice cheese. thing about this is that it sort of starts melting into it, forming a nice little cheesy crust on top. And then you enjoy it. And literally, it takes about 10 minutes from beginning to end. And you can also have some little helpers to help you. Along the way, it goes even faster and it's even more fun. So that's how we make pasta mashup. And thanks for having us on here on Cooks with Garlic. The recipe will be in the cookbook, uh, Cooks with Garlic. And also, please remember to go to kteh.org and vote for your favorite cook video. And also, please submit your favorite garlic recipe so they can be included in the cookbook when it comes out. Thanks for joining us. Is this your favorite garlic uh, dish? No, I like garlic bread better. What about you? Um, I like garlic bread too. Yeah. And my favorite part about cooking garlic and like chopping it up was probably the little buggy car thingy with you. Roll it. Now this garlic um, actually came from the farmer's market because it's a little past the garlic season. Um, but the, we usually grow our own garlic in our garden. Mm -hmm. And it's, you plant it usually around now in December or so. Um, you literally just take something from the, farm, from, the mark, from the grocery store, peel off the individual cloves, and you plant them. You just place them about six inches apart, and they grow. So if you have a sprinkler system in your garden or just Right now, it's a wonderful time to be planting things because the rain has just started, um, and it just grows quickly, and we usually have fresh garlic by about June or July.